welcome to the conversation. I am your co-host Alice Sampson, joined as always by Christopher Crossley himself, Mr. Crossley sir, yes. and we, we have a special guest in our midst at this time, the one, the only, Abiola Alfonso. And we Hi. have a great program here for you all tonight, but before we get into that, take the opportunity right now, share this link with as much persons as possible. For those on Facebook, go ahead, share the link, go ahead and give a, a thumbs up and like the video. For those who are on YouTube, go ahead, like the video as well, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you really like what it is that we are showing in terms of content and if you really, really like what it, what it is you're seeing, go ahead and turn on that notification bell. All right, so one, one of the things that we like to do, we like to give a bit of a COVID check-in. So, Chris... COVID check-in. It's in your court now, man. Yes, yes. Good night, everyone. Once again, welcome to the conversation this week. And we have Miss Alfonso, who is a certified industrial hygienist. I, I hope I didn't bite my tongue there. I, um, <laughs> right? You know, well, we, Chris. <laughs> we want to actually get into that. But before we start, something we do um, we always like to check in with our guests and see how things have been for them during this COVID um, pandemic, right? From the time of lockdown last year, you know, things you may have gone through because we always say, you know, we're in business, but it's a person behind the business and we all go through things. And we like to hear the experience that people have had and are having right now during this period. So how, how has it been for you dealing with the pandemic? Yeah, Bill, how does it been for you? Oh, that's a question. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were mesmerized <laughs> by the live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the pandemic, I mean to say, it was a change for me heading into the working from home and so on. But again, I always like to make the best out of everything. So, you know, I just use the time, you know, to spend more time with family and so on. Um, you know, the global situation on a whole is it's very scary. Um, and, you know, for some persons, it can involve a bit of anxiety and so on. Um, so it's always just to remain positive, um, you know, try to maintain your composure and so on. Because, I mean, looking at news sometimes and following the pandemic all the time could be, you know, very scary. Correct. But, um, you know, it's just about maintaining composure and trying to, you know, get what positive you should get out of the fact that you have all of these situations that has changed. We can no longer function as we used to, but you know, just trying to see how we could make the best of it basically, and that's basically what I have been doing. Okay. okay. Yeah. Did, did you find your find yourself being more productive, less productive? Finding you had to drag yourself <laughs> out of bed. Um, you know, cause a lot of people said they they were struggling with that part some were very productive like overproductive because they think they had all the time and some found it was hard to adjust to, to working from home did you put you any bouts of that um actually I, I will say that i found myself doing things that i always wanted to do because i had right. more time on my hands right. <laughs> um so i found more time to do things that you know so let me share to do more yoga to Spend more time with my daughter, more time with my family. So, so for me, it was just I, more time to do things that I enjoy. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that that is that is basically what came out of it for me. Yeah. All right. Let's hope new managers are listening to hear that she was doing stuff. So guys, okay. are laughing. guys are laughing. Guys are laughing so much. <laughs> that is exactly why I'm laughing so much. Yes, but that that that's my pandemic truth there. <laughs> oh God. No, no. Okay, well. Tonight, we see Makaya is in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good to see you, bro. <laughs> same here, guys. Same here. Good to see you, back. <laughs> great, great, awesome, great. Awesome. All right. So, okay. So, we, so we're talking to the certified industrial hygienist. And for, for all of you listening in, exactly what um, does that entail? What do you do in that regard? Or break down what does someone who is an industrial hygienist do? Okay. Um, and I guess I have any opportunity to actually say what industrial hygiene is right. because mm -hmm. I will share that locally, I'm not bashing any company or anything, but locally I have seen industrial hygiene being used to mean um, 
sanitation of workplace environment, right? And um, mm. I've actually had persons when they heard that I'm an industrial hygienist, and you know, they would come up to me and say, um, "What exactly is that?" You know. So, um, so an industrial hygienist is someone who really would to protect the health of the worker. Mm. So when we examine the actual work that the person do. What we try to do is to look at it from the lens of trying to figure out what could harm the health of the worker. So you're going to evaluate different jobs and activities and so on, and see how it could actually impact the health of the worker, and try to bridge that or stop that from happening. So we put certain control measures in place. We measure, so we do evaluations and so on. Look at the data, see what the data says. Um, recommend protective controls basically to avoid the job that the worker is doing from impacting them and it will be strictly from a health perspective so if i use the example of working with chemicals um if you examine the, the nature of the chemical so the chemical might be harmful to your skin it might be harmful via inhalation um, so different ways the chemical can be harmful as an industrial hygienist. I will examine the chemical, examine the job that the person has to do, and make sure that they can work with the chemical, oh. right, mm -hmm. without it coming into contact with them or impacting their health, whether it be on a short term or a long term uh, basis. That's it in summary. Okay, that, that's a very big summary. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It sounds like you do a lot. <laughs> I mean, because I, I know you give the example of chemicals, but I can only imagine the range of stuff within a workplace that you would have like a checklist to go through to see. And of course, every workplace would have their own um, mm -hmm. specific needs. So, right. wow. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. I guess my day is not as busy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but that, that's incredible. So, yeah. how exactly does you know, we touch on the topic of ergonomics and working from home and, you know, best practices. How do you connect, you know, what you do as an industrial hygienist with, you know, helping people with ergonomics and working from home? Right. So uh, basically it's along the same vein. So when you conduct work, um, whether it be as a work station or an office based station or a factory or wherever you work, there's a certain type of interaction that the person will have with the job that will require uh, bodily movement for your body to take on different postures, right? And ergonomics really is the science behind how these postures should be taken on in order to do the work without the person uh, facing any injury to their body. So basically, um, it's along the same vein in terms of protecting the health of the worker because, you know, poor ergonomics could lead to musculoskeletal skeletal disorders and a host of other things that could happen to the person if you have poor ergonomics. Um, so it's, it's along the same line, right? Um, and to the viewers as well, I know that, you know, we talk about ergonomics in our workplace setting, but ergonomics is so much more. Um, when you sit in your car and mm. you attempt to uh put on your seat belt reach your brake pedal stretch the turn of the volume on the radio and so on all of this is ergonomics in place really just your body positioning as you function you know so all of this is ergonomics just to you know bring it home and, and a little more relatable to food and you know it's all around us basically yeah oh, man. Mm -hmm. uh, i think a lot of people wouldn't have even considered um that as ergonomics so we we, we will put that thing of a chair and how you sit you know, like right. subconsciously right now, I'm actually sitting straight up because I'm talking to industrial hygiene, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you talk about this. Oh, that's good. My mind is like, yeah, yeah. She must be observing every Yes, yes. 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 Yeah, I am ahead, dude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that you connected those dots there because a lot of us would just think that it's about being in an office and you have a proper yeah. executive chair for your home and the first thing is have a proper chair and this type of thing um without considering it's about the movement that you make for you sit you don't even realize sometimes you sit for a while and you start to lean you know some people get that lean in the shoulder from typing um some actually go in a kind of 45 degree angle and i've seen already so they don't realize um that movement happens and even in a car you know stretch the wrong way sometimes you feel your leg cramp 
or all something right. full, you don't realize that and all that is part of is an answer. I'm really appreciative that you shared that. Um, so you, you would have, well, I'm guessing that you would have seen uh, different things that probably people, effects that people would have had from bad postures, right? Or doing jobs that would have caused this type of probably um, posture change. I, I want to ask you, because I like to give people real life situations and I like to go extreme. Um, right, yeah. When That's it comes to bad ergonomics, mm -hmm. what, is some, what is some of the worst um, things you've seen happen to people because of it? Um, hmm. Because of poor ergonomics, I've seen persons with uh, significant back pain. I've mm -hmm. seen persons um, with wrist pain to the extent where they got Parkinson's syndrome. So there's a wide range of things that could happen to persons um, from, you know, utilizing poor ergonomic practices. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say those are some of the some of the, the things that could happen. Persons would have, you know, where they experience significant, you know, stresses on the body and and aches and pains and so on, right? Um, which in um, in many instances could be alleviated if they just practice, you know, proper proper ergonomics. Yeah. Mm, okay. What about um circulation, blood circulation, and all these things as well? Um, do do we have side um, effects? It is possible. But um, I have I have never really dealt with any cases like that to say. Mm -hmm. But um, it is possible. So I could just give an example in terms of how persons are seated. So if you are sitting in such a way that the back of your chair or that edge of your chair is pressed into the back of your knee. So the front edge of your chair pressed into the back mm -hmm. of your knee, that creeps. So if you sit like that for long periods of time, you can experience um, circulation issues. If you um, for persons who are, when we put it to the correct term, so why put it to the challenge, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you sit, um, when you like hanging for the entire day right. as well, you can also experience circulation issues. So yes, that is also a factor that could, um, that could come into play uh, when looking at, at ergonomics, yeah? Okay, that's good. Mike, I know as a trainer, you would have encountered um, people with certain bad back posturing and shoulders and stuff like that. Is anything sure. she's saying, you know, connecting with you as a trainer in regards to that? Um, to be honest, she's very spot on because um, the, I would say the, the part of my job that, that has become more required now than before is corrective exercise. Right? Um, before COVID, we did, I would have known better than my clients because a lot of people have those issues, but everything she's explaining now, it, it happens way more, you know, because for example, most people are home, nobody's watching them, nobody's observing their posture, nobody, no, nobody's around to see them <laughs> or, or tuck the leg under the, under the, under the butt to sit, yeah. you know, yeah. and as simple as leading in a car for a long period of time. Could gradually give their hip tilt. So I have a lot of clients now that have hip issues, upper back issues, lower back issues, shoulder issues, mm -hmm. and like she said, Capitan is one of the biggest. That mm -hmm. is like a definite um, issue for most people because I think other people never transition to a proper home setup initially, and they would have stuck a jamming from that from the beginning. So everything she's saying right now, like I can see clients that are currently experiencing those problems, and we're not having the yeah. Even with muscle training, Mike, in terms of that, is it a matter of, sorry, I should actually ask, is it a matter of muscle training or doing any proper stretch, stretches to help alleviate that? Because I'm seeing um, how it's it's a combination of, yeah. It's a combination of both, but also advising them to, to have better posture when they're in that position. So when they're away from the gym, I only have them for like an hour, 45 minutes, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. But when they're on their job, it's eight hours, sometimes more, sometimes less, whatever. Yeah. So they are in that four position for a longer period of time. So me doing ex corrective exercises is only part of the puzzle. Part of it. All right. So Abiola, based on what you see, he just shared there, right? Um, because we want people to be aware of what is happening to their body over time for themselves. Like try to be aware that they're actually going into these things. What are some symptoms 
or, or things that people can see if they notice about themselves to know that this is happening to them, that they're, they're getting, because of bad posture, they're probably cutting off blood circulation and stuff as you would have, you know, touched on. So neck pain, shoulder pain, um, back pain, You'll also have like um, pins and needles in the legs, maybe in the hands, depending on where the person is working or what posture they're working in. And when I say pins and needles, like in Trini jargon, we would say um, catching cramp or mm -hmm. right. fall asleep. You could fall right okay, there, right? right. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so things like that is what will kind of, you know, alert you to the fact that you're not sitting in the correct position. And I mean, even things like I eat um sometimes your eyes are hurting you um headaches yeah. even things like that are also pointing towards you know probably working in the wrong posture and i really okay. like what makaya said um in terms of people you know not transitioning over into proper workstation and you know it has been challenging for many persons because some people you know they don't have the furniture uh, as mm -hmm. one and some people they don't have the space to properly transition so a lot yeah. of persons um face challenges in this way it's very difficult to have for some persons to have a full-on office at home right. right so you find you will see people on the couch on the dining table in um, the bed. Some people, they might lie down on the floor they're in the bed and so on so you know they're not making the best choices because you know some of them don't have the resources or maybe they just have the opportunity to be more comfortable and no. or then with the trouble comfortable because they can work from wherever they want they can sit on in front of the tv and so on and because of that you know that is why makaya now will get more people coming to him you know <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> seems devastated issues, <laughs> trying to deal with these issues well yeah um i'm glad you mentioned these things because i actually thought it was just old age um <laughs> You know, but you know, the fact that we could all just be suffering from bad posture. So everybody yeah. that's thinking that they're getting old, stop it. All right? You're probably sitting down bad. You probably mm -hmm. have the wrong chair or the wrong positioning the way you're actually yeah. able to work from for lengthy periods. Um, have you ever heard, well, I'm sure you probably heard of the Pomodoro method, where you would work for a specific amount of time uh, and then take a break, you know, stretch, walk, is that still, I, I personally use that. Um, yeah. Do you find that helps a lot for anybody? Do you have you ever heard of that method to say to advise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what I would really or, or what I would normally recommend would be a five to seven minute break every one hour. Okay. Um, I would recommend movement within that time. So another challenge that we have because we are working from home is everything is closed. So the washroom is closed. So the kitchen is closed. So um. We tend not to move around as much. Um, sure. So yeah, we have to make that extra effort, basically. So every hour, just move about five to seven minutes. You're moving about, you might be standing up to take a phone call, things like that. Um, every, these guys also the 20, 20 rules to protect the eyes. Um, yeah. So every 20 minutes, you look 20 feet in front of you for 20 seconds just to get away from staring at that screen for the entire time yeah. because that mm. is also um, part of ergonomics as well. Right? Wow. So those are some of the things that persons could could do um, just to, you know, help to break that that thing and that same posture. You know? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. That's what that's what um that's input there because, you know, I've had a lot of um clients now mention that they would they have become so demanding that they hardly leave their desk. Okay. You know, they they're under more scrutiny in some way. I have no idea how that's even possible now. But um they, they, they feel as though they can't move from the desk. Like, you know? I don't yeah. know if, yeah. if that's something yeah. that well, that's yeah. from the company that, side or that, that, that's an overproductive thing I saw happening <laughs> for some people as well. They feel like mm. I'm home after that. I should be able to do more, so I feel like I should be doing yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, self imposed sometimes. So even even yeah. management, even management, they have been like one of my clients just telling me recently that she's had basically a triple in the amount of meetings she has on a daily basis yeah, during exactly. COVID. And she say the majority of them are unnecessary. They are just staying at the screen and wondering, okay, why am I here? Yeah. And then you go from one meeting to the next to the next to the next. She said, no big thing, you know. I'm like, this is 
Yeah. I call that I call that Tuesday. <laughs> Dude, I have friends that complain about that very same thing. I just call them meeting mountains. They they I mean like mm-hmm. you, there's no way that could be healthy one and then over communication is the next thing that affects people a lot. Um, you know, being in meetings back to back that meetings that could be emailed. <laughs> you know, let's, yeah. let's not encourage yeah. that. Mm-hmm. That's that's for sure. So I no, gonna, no, go ahead. So, uh, no, I was also going to share for the person to keep person. So one of the things I like to also, you know, if I have to advise persons on their home ergonomics, I will always bring up um, the fact that you can hack your station, right? Um, mm-hmm. So you might be sitting, you have a, a desk or your dining table or whatever it is, and you are sitting all day, but you can come up with a way to make a temporary sit stand workstation. So you cannot um let's really walk away from the workstation but you can have a box so something that you can put your laptop on at a height and you can stand and work for a period of time um i don't like to say in lieu of a brick because i i really believe in taking bricks and i can share with you all why um but um but you can hack into your workstation and come up with a sit stand um with this and that can help you take your break while with it. Yeah? Yeah. I, I know a lot of people that purchase the standing desks or the, the risers that they put on their desk. Right. Yeah. 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 I know a lot of yeah. people started doing that, especially since we started working from home, which, which would actually lead to my next question in terms of um, proper home office setup. Mm-hmm. You know, all right, we, we know there is a perfectly good home office setup, but what do you think are some of the, the bad habits? Let's let's get into what people we know people are probably doing. Um, yeah. You know, I know one for sure is lying down in bed with the laptop trying to do work. Yeah. You know, but what but what are some of the things you have probably heard or seen um, or know people to do that is improper? All right, so I can say off the top, the lying down on the bed, the lying down on the couch, the lying down on the floor. That's a no-no. If um if I had to uh, recommend or advise somebody, I would say that's a no-no. Um, because those positioning, we have a lot of function of the shoulders. Um, you have a lot of you know pressure being placed on sometimes one side of the body for long mm-hmm. periods of time, yes. right? So you have neck pains, back pains, and so on that could arise from that. So those are no no. Um, with the dining table though. As I said, I am an advocate for hacking your workstation if you cannot really get a proper setup to space resources or whatever reason. So with a dining table, the dining table tends to be higher than a regular desk with the chair being lower, right? Mm-hmm. So for persons who are sitting at their dining table, what I would advise them to do is prop themselves up on a pillow, um, maybe use a roll towel or something behind them to give them some back support, some lumbar support, Maybe get a box, a foot stool, something below to prop up the foot, right? Because maybe when you prop yourself up on the cushion, your foot is no longer touching the floor. And this is how you can sort of hack into working at your at your dining table. Um, so while I would say working on your dining table is it's not good because of how the dining table is constructed, you're not going to be have that ergonomic posture. It is is one of these situations that you could hack and kind of build a temporary yeah. workstation yeah. that could bring it to, you know, ergonomic standards, if, so to speak, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Not, not, not to mention dining table chairs. Dining chairs aren't meant to no. sit for lengthy periods. Um, no, I, I can attest to that nonsense, but we'll get into that a little bit in yes, a while. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes, not. Um, so, so that's why I said put the, put the cushion, put the yeah. towel behind the back, so it's like a happiness so that you can do the work on the dining table. But just as you said, it's not designed for that. No. Just as mm-hmm. you said, yeah, it's not designed for that. Yeah. And, and I, I tell people, you learn certain things the hard way. Um, because, <laughs> you know, when you, you don't have a chair, you purchase a cheap chair from that, that place in song with the, that usually in yellow. Um, I won't call the name of the company. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have, I don't, I don't have, I do not have that's court clothes. That's, that's so these things you can, you know, you end that's up sitting with, <laughs> you end up sitting with a dining room chair for, for years and you don't realize that it's actually slowly affecting you. 
Um, so at a, at a work station at, at home, or what do you say? What would you say is the number one thing that someone should have? Is it a proper desk, a proper chair, proper keyboard alignment? What would you say is the number one thing someone should have? Oh, that's really, really hard to answer. Um, if I had to choose, um, so I don't advocate a lot of things, and one of the things I don't advocate is working directly off of your laptop. Mm. So um, I think that you must have peripherals for your laptop. You must have a keyboard, a monitor, a mouse. And if you have to choose between keyboard, monitor, mouse, I would say get a keyboard, get a mouse, and you can always lift the height of your laptop to bring it to eye level. So I will advocate for peripherals um, because you could hack the seat. Right. You can't really hack a keyboard. You can hack your chair, right? You can hack the table, but you can't really hack a keyboard and a mouse, right? Right. And you have an issue with the laptop because remember with a laptop, the keyboard is hooked on to the monitor. That is basically what it is if you put it in the terms of a regular um, yeah. setup. And it's a shaking head like, you know, I just be waiting for my laptop. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> All right. Yeah, so it's, it's attached to each other. Yeah. And really and truly, when you're tight and your elbow is supposed to be at a 90 degree angle, mm -hmm. right? Um, to be in neutral posture, no um, hunch up shoulders or hunch down. And then when you look forward, your screen or your monitor, the top of your monitor is supposed to be at eye level or just level. below. Right? Exactly. So the way a laptop is designed, you're not going to get that. So basically, like if you're working on a laptop for more than 20 minutes, the recommendation is you at least get a mouse. Right? Yeah. You at least um, put the laptop up on a height. You start to do things to actually bring yourself into neutral posture. So the laptop is designed for, you know, short amounts of work, um, so short periods of time. You shouldn't really work yeah. directly from it continuously. So if I had to choose for persons working from home, I would say number one on the list is get some peripherals um, yes. for your laptop. And mm -hmm. the rest of it, you can hack it until you are able to get a better chair or whatever the case is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. That, that is exactly what I'm about to say next. I am a very big advocate for proper seating. You see a proper chair, mm -hmm. I will spend money mm -hmm. on a proper chair. Like, well, currently, I use one of those um, portable massage um, cushions, those seats, mm -hmm. right. on, on the chair that I have now. And that, that has actually, the cushioning, the cushioning from that has actually helped me tremendously, which was a gift from my in-laws. So I know they're tuned in. Thanks once again for that. <laughs> 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 you know, because... I mean, when you actually have to do work and you know you're going to be there for some long hours, mm -hmm. um, there are those of us that, you know, really don't take breaks. They're sitting down on a chair for them one, two, three hours. Mm -hmm. You know, you need that comfort. And like that, that chair that you're sitting down on now. Yes. You know, you know, mm -hmm. we, which, which we've been observing. Yes, right. we've, we've been right. hating on it. Right. We have been yes, hating on yes, it. Yes, <laughs> yes. So... <laughs> so so, so from someone that has one, a game chair versus an executive chair, mm -hmm. which, which which would you go to first? Because I'm I am I am all for the gaming chairs, so they're really yeah, well, comfortable. It, um, so as an industrial hygienist, so I'll put it this way. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, that's not for that. Right. <laughs> um, I will look at adjustability of the chair, right? So, um, the whole. The whole concept of ergonomics really and truly is fitting the job to suit the worker or fitting what is around to fit in the factory, fit in the office, okay. whatever, to suit the fact that yeah. you will have shorter workers, taller workers, whatever. Persons come in different shapes, sizes, blah, blah, blah. Right? So that is what the concept of ergonomics is about. So for me, when you have a, when you're selecting a chair, it's about adjustability. And they will want to have as much adjustability as possible. So what are the top <laughs> yeah, I saw. Don't worry. I saw that. I, I saw that from Kevin. I saw it from Kevin. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> so, yes, Kevin, your chair. So, um, yeah, I will say it's adjustability. So basically, um, the more adjustable it is, the better. If I had to choose out, what are your thoughts? Going to the gaming versus office just now. But if I had to choose out, um, the main adjustability chair height, um, 
speed depth, which is the stick fan being able, able to move back and forth. Mm -hmm. You must have some lumbar support. Mm -hmm. um, most uh, preferably adjustable lumbar support, right? So that you can move it up and down and get that nice shape, right? The armrest now must also be adjustable up and down and inwards and outwards as well. So those are just some of the, the main adjustabilities that I will look for if I am selecting a chair. And in terms of whether it's a game chair or executive chair, I will say once I have the adjustability, I don't have an issue with it, especially if you're going to use it specifically to do your work. And then maybe I might want to slide in and, and play a little game or whatever with it. I don't know. <laughs> But right. once you, if you're going to use it as an office chair, I, I say adjustability is, is what you will look at. So some of the gaming chairs have the adjustability. I personally reviewed this one, um, you know, <laughs> for myself. <laughs> so yeah, and it has adjustability. So once you have that adjustability, there's, um, you can, um, Chris, you can get whatever chair you want, right? right. If it's a game chair <laughs> and you want to use it for gaming and office, that's fine. I feel you're hinting on something you just do. That was good. No, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I just, I just, no, I just put, in case I get any trouble, so, so, so give your kids for buying a game chair, right? I'm helping you. I'm helping you. I'm not doing that. I'm helping you. I'm helping you. I'm helping you. By that explanation, the chair I'm sitting on, on now needs to go outside. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See, no more. I think I have to change my chair. I'm watching my chair now and thinking, oh, my chair raggedy now, all this kind of thing. I don't, yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> no, but you see, but you see, that's the thing, though. We actually know, yet we haven't adjusted or changed it yet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we're literally talking about this while doing bad practices right now. Oh, <laughs> you know, which, which is kind of messed up, right? Yeah. But. It is good to, that we know what we should do. Mm -hmm. That's why we enjoy yeah. this conversation tonight. So all those that probably now tuning in or joined us late, you know, we're here with Ms. Abiola Alfonso and we're speaking about ergonomics while working from home. I mean, you know, looking at the symptoms and the ways we correct any sort of like bad posture and stuff like that. Um, I see I see we have a question in the in the chat, which we actually will address, but I want to address it a little later on. So Ms. Ms. Graham, thank you for that question. We will actually answer that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, right. So, we, we, we looked at that. What do you think people should be doing now? Because we always like to make sure people have some, some like a to-do list of things that they should be addressing now to probably help with working from home, be it ergonomics, be it probably staying long in the car, those that, that go on long drives, like, like our friend Makaya here, right? who basically goes on a New Year country tour every day. Um, you Very know, right? Mm -hmm. You know, these type of things. So what are some steps or what are some things people should look at um, so that they, they ensure that they are practicing the right things? Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's really about being mindful about your posture. Um, so I don't want to go into yogi mode here, but I like to say your body speaks to you. So mm -hmm. when you are... When you are um, sitting in an improper posture, most of the times you will know because you will experience the discomfort. Um, yeah. So it's basically understanding uh, that you need to have the correct posture and recognizing when you are not sitting in. For example, um, sitting at your workstation, right? Mm -hmm. I have seen many persons, you work, you come, you get a new workstation or whatever, you just sit down and you can start to work, right? But if you step back, you take a step back and you look at how you are arranged because most of the time when you deal with the person, they will be, oh my gosh, so that is why this was feeling like that. So if you really, you know, try to focus and actually listen to how your body is feeling or think about how your body is feeling, um, I think most of us can, can improve our posture and our general day-to-day -day ergonomics. Okay. Yeah, I hope people are taking notes. Yeah. Um, my, you know, I don't, just, just I, uh, right. I'm not going to answer that yet. No, I'm actually going to ask you if you had anything to add in, in regards to that. So, yeah. I think um, the only thing I'll add is that for those who work mobile, like myself, the same concept should apply. So, for example, driving and putting the body in particular positions. 
I mean, sometimes you drive, you get tired of driving, and yes, you begin to and and tilt your hip and twist, and one leg goes up high and one hand goes, yeah. That creates pain. <laughs> it creates yeah, issues. Correct, correct. You know, and um, so now I've I've been doing a lot as I'm on the road. Is that I would stop, like I'm the man, man. I'll be at the side of the road, out on the shoulder, but I start stretching. Right? Oh, that because, was you. Okay, oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it it's I I drive really long distances most times and. Use of that is important to me because I I initially when COVID was the first restrictions were lifted and I was on the road a lot. I started to get some lower back pain and I was like, I had to check myself to like what what went wrong. And then I realized I was sitting in traffic for hours mm-hmm. and then come out, train a client, go back into the car, back in the same position and drive again. And as the day went by, I would just begin to fall into the chair or melt into the chair more and more, <laughs> you know. And I realized that. I wasn't really actually um even and for those even like for example abiola you know this too even for us who are in professions that teach us the right thing sometimes we have to also make ourselves check to make sure we're not doing the wrong thing correct you know yes correct. so i had correct. to do that same thing and adjust myself and adjust my seat to make sure i'm aligned properly i'm because the sense of so that my legs not feeling like you know i get hip pain or whatever mm-hmm. so those who drive truck car taxi whatever take time to see about mm-hmm. your body and it might seem weird, take a stretch. Like it's not going it's not going to do it yet, it's gonna help you. Take a stretch. Take a walk. Yes. <laughs> right. Makaya, I really I really love that you said that because um even at your desk, your workstation, there are stretches that you can do during the day as well. Yeah. Um when you're sitting this this prolonged position. So I really like that you bring up that stretching thing because <laughs> you know, persons you can you can stretch at your desk. You know, stand up, and I always used to say, you know, if your manager or somebody pass and say a stretch, you're like, okay, well, what's going on here, you know? But at the end of the day, you know, it's something that we need to do and we need to practice. So the, yeah. the, the, move, the movement during the day, the movement part of it coming out of that, that sustained position, very yeah. important, very important. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he mentioned driving, but even for those of us, that travel um, long distances because I mean these guys would know my my experience back in 2019. Um, well, I had just moved to Shavonas from living in Port of Spain where I would at the time, so I could have walked a lot um, traveling with a shorter distance. But now that I moved to Shavonas, it was longer sitting times in traffic, um, longer standing times waiting for transportation, and then randomly. October of 2019, at home, got up with a pain, and that pain escalated to where I literally couldn't walk for three days, and it was my sciatica wow. um, yeah. nerve, mm-hmm. right? And I, I mm-hmm. always tell people that that pain is something I will never forget. And mm-hmm. since that experience, I have had <laughs> dozens of people, and I mean people I never even knew that never mentioned it, that actually experienced that pain. Yeah. And, you know, there are people that when I looked at it, they, they, they had jobs where they work long hours or they were, were always driving mm-hmm. um, or long travels. Who was, living, who was working south, sorry, living, living south or working south. So they experience those long things as well. Is yes. that something you have seen yeah. on the increase at all? Have you been hearing people speak about this theatrical issues? Because after I, I had it, I remember my mom had it years ago. But then after I experienced it, a lot of people came out you would work talking about this pain that they get. Is this something you yeah. have seen risen? Um, I wouldn't say I have seen it risen, but I would say that it has always been there. And right. um, you know, it's more prevalent than we think. Back it's yeah. used, back pain, sciatic nerves it's used. And um if you look at like statistics and so on, you will see that back injuries and back pain and so on is one of the leading causes of lost time globally. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So it's one of the leading causes of, of time away from us. So we have, yes, we have the safety issues and the uh, this happened and that happened, but you know, sometimes we kind of overlook that uh, back pain. And when we talk about back pain and back injuries, remember, we, we have to also keep in mind, it's not just the office worker, we have factory workers, we have mm-hmm. persons using um, tools in repetitive um, positions, yeah, right? They have, yeah. right. 
So you, you have a wide range of persons that are susceptible to these back injuries based across um, so many numerous job descriptions, you know? So, yeah. um, it's to share that, you know, it's something that is very prevalent, maybe not spoken about, but global statistics, as I said, shows wow. that back injuries is on top there with lost time injuries. It's, it's high up on the list. Okay. Yeah, almost yeah. Yeah. That is that is crazy though. Because when yeah. I shared it publicly, a lot of people came out saying they've been yeah, experiencing yeah. this, and I have never heard about it before. I didn't even know what it was. It's only when I was like, yeah. people are going through this, and there are people that are still living with it still. You know, and that is why, like, when yeah. um when we advocate like for good ergonomics in the workplace, it's because it actually saves the organization yeah. costs in the long run because it is. Um, it is up there with, with uh, lost time injuries and so on, but pain is, is high on the list. So, yeah. I, I'm glad you brought up that particular point with respect to um, changes that are happening within the organization itself that's starting to pay a lot more attention to ergonomics, etc., and the workplace. Now, because a number of companies have gone the way of work from home by force because of COVID, and I mean, numbers are going to be changing eventually. Um, you're hearing a number of companies saying that things may not go back to exactly the same way it is again. That the whole concept of work from home is going to be something that is definitely going to be a long-term structure behind it. Now, based, based on that drive that is going out there, um, our companies, and this may be from you speaking with other persons within the HSC area, is it that culturally companies are seeing it more as definitely the area of safety is it they're looking at it as more as a hr issue is it a combination of both right now what's happening on the ground culturally maybe from your network of persons within the um the realm of industrial hygiene itself what is happening or the trend of where companies are starting to look at right now yeah i think this will be a issue of course the board alistair um mm -hmm. it will not be an as specifically and specifically an hsc issue um, it will it will definitely sit there um, from an IH perspective, industrial hygiene. Mm -hmm. But there are also some HR, legal. It, it's a lot of um, different aspects of it uh, when you look at it. Because remember, when you are sitting at home, you are in the company's clock um, doing the booth. So there's a lot of yeah. factors that you will have to you have to look at. It's not, I don't think it's going to sit in any one area of the company. Because mm -hmm. it can impact, you know, so much more, so much more different areas. Um, I could go further, but I will kind of stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yes, it, it's gonna impact different aspects of the business, and it's not it's not just an HSC issue or an issue of um, a loss sign injury or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. gonna be more to it. There's gonna be more to it, right? Well, it kind of started to go down a particular line and it comes really in line with the question from Trace and Hill. Yes, I know who you are. <laughs> right, where she asks. <laughs> yeah, she tuned on, man. Welcome, man. Welcome. Um, are children less susceptible to ergonomic issues than adults or should we also ensure that their setup for virtual school is ergonomically sound? And is it possible that they can be affected in the long term? Definitely. So, um, yes, children uh, can be a bit more susceptible because, again, the discipline, I guess we have more awareness in terms of trying to maintain that proper posture, right? Mm -hmm. um, children do. So that is, from that alone, that goes to say that they are more susceptible. Their bones are also still developing and so on, yeah. right? So, yes, they, are, they have a high level of susceptibility. I don't want to say more susceptible because again it all boils down to the user and you know how well they interact with the workstation right um but in terms of the schooling from home mm -hmm. yes you have to make sure that your children are ergonomically set up as well yes we have to position the screens properly so some of our children are doing school on the tablet yeah. and we have them with their head so, for the entire day right mm, yeah. so if you look at the research around that the more forward you tilt your head is the heavier the head becomes for the neck right mm. so 
Um, and this is the position that some of our children are. So you want to now put the tablet on a table for the tablet to stand up and actually have the child look forward at the tablet, right? You want to set up the area that the children is writing as well so that they can reach comfortably. All of these things you want to consider when you're setting up your child. Um, ergonomic issues is definitely something that we have to consider for our children right now. Definitely. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's um it's really interesting because I think over the last couple of years with more and more mobile devices becoming available to kids and yeah. more parents giving them that as a keep yourself occupied. Right? Mm -hmm. Um like even when we did before COVID we would have done a, a weight loss camp for kids. And during the assessments we would only put them against a wall. Right. Right? And we have certain points to the boy that's just a touch the wall. And ninety percent of the kids had a forward tilt, like the head was like this this thing they put up forward on the shoulders and it's not always just genetics as some people will, will try to say but it's habit is basically how you right. basically position your body right. your body begins to you know and i think we, we are doing kids an injustice now by encouraging that behavior you know slouching down watching that habit on your lap like abiola said and we seem to think it's the norm and it's normal right but in the years to come that's going to do so much more bad Agreed. to the body Agreed. Dan, Dan, good. Yeah. It's gonna, it's so, I'm seeing like, a lot of a lot of teenagers now with that rounded shoulder, right. yeah. so yeah. and right. then twist and it's ridiculous. And what we also have to understand is the breaks are just as important to the children and the, the, the position that we find ourselves in now is that prior they would have gone off to school and come home and spend some time on the tablet after school. Yeah. But now school is the tablet yeah. and play is the tablet. You know, so that is a unique position we find ourselves in. So, you know, we still now have to think about what breaks look like, um, what the length of time you're spending on the device looks like. And, yeah. you know, just to also keep in mind that um, we're also looking at the impact on the vision as well, right? Yeah. Staring at the screen for the entire yeah. day, sometimes in poor light, and sometimes um, different contrasts of light in your house and you try to sit in a dark corner and so so many different factors here that we have to consider okay. um, right. that will make our children that could yeah. possibly make our children more susceptible you know agreed yeah, yeah. Agree. now i i know we're discussing you know ergonomics and working from home but we do have a question from someone in the audience miss graham mm -hmm. and she asks mm -hmm. you know what about sleep ergonomics you know mm -hmm. positions where we actually sleep in you know sleep on the back versus on the side versus on the stomach um, I know from a medical perspective, they tell you it's always better to sleep on your left because of, that's how your body internal um, plumbing is, is laid out for you to sleep better. But in terms of ergonomics, um, what is, you know, the, the best thing for that? Um, hmm. There's so many varying opinions on this particular thing, right? So uh, one of the papers that I actually would have read would have uh, supported sleeping flat on the back, right? Um, because the, the thought behind it is when you sleep on either side, you can pump, you could probably have improper posture because you have the shoulders, the neck and so on, um, oh, at yeah. that, yeah, angles, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's also that left side that you mentioned because yeah. of how our body is made up and so on. So there are different schools of thought on it, um, but I see a lot of support for either sleeping on the back or sleeping on the left side of the body, right? So that, that, that is basically, you know, most of the, the literature that exists on that mm -hmm. would, point, would point specifically to either, either of those two. I can't, I'm not in a position to say which is the best. Better, You know, right. yeah. Yeah, so we see the old diagrams <laughs> with the pillow between your knees and stuff like that. You know. Correct, yeah. correct. You see, I think everything My, has a poop or sometimes. Right. right, so like those, those, those um, ideologies where you put the pillow between your leg or your pop pillow, between your arms, stuff where your shoulders collapsing, there are different reasons for if the person has a pre existing condition of some sort, then those things may help them out better than somebody who Correct. is fine. Correct, yeah. Right? Um, I mean, as I think now more than before, people are falling asleep in some weird position. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had a client today that came and she was like, it's like, Mike, you're looking swollen, and from here all the way down is swollen. And I was like, I said, okay, we didn't train since last week. I said, nothing I would have given you was in this area. 
And I was like, the publicity bar. She's like, nah. I was like, we're falling asleep on the couch. Like, I said, more yeah. likely your head will be going to be on the headrest and your body mm-hmm. lower and then your head tilted to the side. Yeah. And even with pillows and stuff like that, they are, they are those that I call pillow bandons that have a million pillows on the bed mm-hmm. and your neck ends up in some weird position. You know, you got to be mindful of yeah, what all this is natural for your body too. You know what I mean? Because sometimes it's just ridiculous how much we try to make ourselves comfortable and put our body in some weird position. Correct. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Correct. Agreed. Correct, I, yeah. Now, I, I know we're getting into the top of the hour by one side, but I want to be able to go into this part of it um, because we're talking economics and it ties into something that you do as well as you we were speaking before the show started that you actually a yoga instructor mm-hmm. right so how do you tie in you know like we know yoga for other people is, is stretches we know it's not about you know chanting and stuff that some people think it is that, mm-hmm. that they do in india and stuff like that with different religious yeah. uh, practices okay. but how do you tie in yoga um now with those and i mean not, not those but with ergonomics and proper posture yeah um so Actually, a couple of the poses that you can do during the day uh, when you are sitting at your station are actually mm-hmm. yoga poses. So the stretches that you can do are actually yoga poses. Right. And then there's the benefits of regular stretching which helps, which helps to improve your posture. So it goes both ways. So when you are sitting at your workstation, you can do some yoga stretches and so on during the day. Some very simple ones that can help, you know, loosen the muscles and avoid those aches and pains and of course those sedentary um, type issues that, that come up because the muscles are not being used or moved, right? Um, and then attending the yoga class or, or having regular stretching um, helps you with your posture, right? So it's yeah. kind of, it's, it's, it's linked. There's a link there, right? Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Mike, have you ever seen the need for, for probably, I know you would do stretches with your clients. Um, mm-hmm. Would it be anything to the extent where you would, you would recommend that they do yoga? Um, to, be very, to be very, very honest, I'm very pro yoga for, this, for the reason that it puts your body back into some natural movements in terms of extending back all the spine and these different things that people don't do. Right? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of my clients, when you stretch, if I was to a client that just, just came to the gym and they warm up a bit and then just tie them to a stretch routine, problems. The hips, the lower back, the shoulders, and it's because when we're at our desk, most times it's a very unnatural position. And I think for, in these times more so, I think things like yoga, having a, a post like a carriage through that stretching format is really important. So I'm really, I'm really pro. <laughs> yoga for that for that main reason as well as what else it does for the body yeah i can also share um, i can also share with you all as well um a lot of the students that i got that i have in my yoga classes many of them seem to be with theatrical um carpal tunnel syndrome um so many different things that they would have attributed to their work Right? So again, this is also the link. So there are very specific yoga poses that you can do that can assist with um, back pains and the sciatica yeah. itself. There are specific ones for the sciatica and similarly for the carpal tunnel syndrome, depending on where you are at for the progression of, of theme, there are yoga poses that can be done to, um, to also work on those muscles and, and trying to repair them, um, so to speak. So again, and these are these are live cases. These are people that I have in my yoga classes, like right now, that are dealing with some of these these um sort of ergonomic um it's, <laughs> yeah it's usually resulting from you know poor ergonomic practices yeah, ergonomic. or so on, right? Yeah. So, you're talking about yoga and instantly the Janelle Monet tunes that are playing my head. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember that song. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So we have our next question. Um, well, of course, dealing with children again, what are the best way for children to carry their backpack with books? Because we know a lot of children, we see some of these backpacks. Um, now I don't know if working, um, going to school from home, you know, they will still have that issue per se, but before, especially um, pre-COVID, mm-hmm. what would you suggest is the best way for children to carry their backpacks with, with the books? 
Yeah, I am a strong advocate to be trolley bag or the pulling of the books, right? But again, we must be mindful that pulling is also a force um, that mm. that impact on the shoulder or that particular side of the body. Um, so we still have to be mindful there. But in terms of impact, I am a strong advocate for using of the, the bags that you can actually pull. I don't know if they still call them trolley bags. I don't know yeah, trolley bags. I had a trolley bag up until phone four. Yeah, I had one too, but I was saying I don't know if that's the name or I don't. Yeah, yeah, it's not funny, man. Sorry, it's it's all good until you actually walk it behind a little child pulling it, though. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm old school. I never had a trolley bag. <laughs> no, no, we got two things in existence in our. Day. No, not in my days. No, let's, let's um, let's not eat ourselves. Yeah, like mm. we young boy, like we young. <laughs> <That's not, laughs> well, they're cutting deep, boy. Like, yeah, boy. <laughs> 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 well, all right. I mean, this this has been a very good conversation tonight, and we really do appreciate you sharing your time and your expertise. Um, Mike, I don't know if you have any questions for her, um, and pertaining as you all, you know, similar fields in, but, but similar fields. But to be with. very honest, like a lot of what she would have answered already, um, it ties back a lot. Um, right. The name I'll ask her is for those companies um, that do not have in place a proper HSC team or they have not put in place things that would help in this industry to guide their, their staff accordingly. Um, in the event that they are listening or an employee is listening, I can take back with to them. Um, do you have any suggestions for any material or services that can be offered to them or that kind of thing? Offered by who? <laughs> no, by you actually. <laughs> by, by, you. Um, by you, if you want to go that way. <laughs> Okay, so um, I, I will put it out there that um, in the near future, I will post under my upcoming consultancy company. I have not done much work with it as yet, but I will post an um, um, ergonomic session where I can actually go through with persons how to adjust and, you know, I'm going to make it available because I feel like one of the objectives of, of coming out and having that sort of consultancy company is to really promote and help to build industrial hygiene in, in country because it's right. a very uh, very small fee as I told you all at the beginning of the presentation when yeah. some people hear industrial hygiene they think in sanitation services right. and not necessarily mm. what, what I do right so um, yeah. one of my big aims is to promote industrial hygiene and help persons to get you know into the practice of proper industrial hygiene practices <laughs> and not by force because, because they understand and they want to so um, that is one of the things that we can look out for from me, and it's going to be a session where, you know, person can log in and so on, and at no cost. Um, so it's one of the first initiatives I'm looking to do under um, the umbrella of my upcoming consultancy um, company. Upcoming. Awesome. Remember she said, yeah. when you see the hands move like that, all right? Oh, Lord. I say, I say you, it's you know, upcoming because... You know women's serious when their hands are upcoming. <laughs> I put it that way because I haven't done much work under the umbrellas yet, but you know, mm, right. under the consultancy umbrella. But I am, you know, looking at doing this particular thing because it's, there's a need for it out there, as mm -hmm. as a right? Definitely. Um, so I'm really looking at you know getting out there and, and starting to get some information out there to persons and build industrial hygiene probably in country in region even because it's not something that we are very big on in the Caribbean, you know? Right. Yeah. And definitely and I believe you could do it. Yeah, where's that Chris? No, no, you go ahead. No, 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 as I say, I, I definitely encourage you to do that. I mean, you're right. It's needed definitely within Trinidad and Tobago and yeah. the Caribbean especially. Uh, it, as you rightfully said, it's, it's not really heard of and it's not really the popular area that people go into in terms of a profession, but you realize it's needed more than ever now. With respect to persons who work into the process area in the factories itself persons who work in the office who are working from home so you realize that the range is now expanding more than ever with respect to industrial hygiene um abiola thank you so very much for really connecting with us and i really thank for all our viewers that have been asking the questions left right and center tremaine june smith simon um nick I, uh, I see Kevin came online as well too and throwing his two cents with respect to the seat of Yola, <laughs> right? <laughs> right, and um, Manifa as well too and all of those that, that commented as well. Um, thank you all very much for 
connecting on and, and being online with us on the um, the conversation here right so for those who are connect who listening to it go ahead share this link to as much persons as possible go ahead and give this a thumbs up a like it really helps out a lot in terms of what we are doing here and for, again for those who are on YouTube go ahead give this video a like if you really really like what you're seeing go ahead and subscribe to our channel the conversation and if you really 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 like what you're hearing go ahead and turn on that notification bell so you'll be updated on all the videos that we load up as well so again Thank you all very much for connecting on and see you all next time on okay, the conversation. Wait, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Yeah, no, yeah. We, we have to give Abby a little chance. I know oh, yes. Let doctor. us know. So, you know, if anybody wants to, to sign up for your yoga class, uh huh. Right? Oh, yes. dog or dog or the, is it goat yoga too? I saw that's a thing now. <laughs> not, well, no, I don't have any goat. <laughs> all right. You know, if anybody wants to sign up for your yoga classes, how can they reach you? Are you on, you know, Instagram, social media? How can they get in contact with you? Yeah. Um, so, for my yoga classes, I am on Facebook, Yoga with Abby Marie. Mm -hmm. Right? All right. And on Instagram, Yoga underscore with underscore Abby Marie. Right? right. So, if, if persons want to sign up, they can contact me there. Right. And as I'm already here, mm -hmm. if I'm... <laughs> If persons are also interested in any um, eye type, you know, advice, or maybe you want to bounce a question off of me from today's session, you can reach out to me. I am on LinkedIn by my full name. Um, oh. Or you can send me an email, um, abiolamaria87 at gmail.com, and I could always get back. I could get back to you all um, if you all want any eye advice so maybe we have some hsc persons here who may not be very specialized in ice mm -hmm. and they might have to support their team um in the area of ergonomics and they might want some help on it or whatever so you all can always reach out to me mm -hmm. and i will um support you as i can all right well what you could do you can send me the information with respect to your ig tag linkedin facebook right. and the page and, and we'll right. update it here as well right. too within the group so persons can get right. it anytime they want Correct. Okay, great. Correct. Let's All do right. that. So yes, so tonight was very informative. Oh yeah. You know, people like we mentioned, you're not getting old, you're just saying no bad. <laughs> All right. <It's> not... <laughs> so it was very like informative. That a new line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I do want to thank you for joining us tonight and I definitely appreciate you your knowledge. And of course your time, it was very much appreciated. To all those that are listening, you know, we, we, we will be back next week, Tuesday, same time, 8 p.m. All right. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, please continue to adhere to all COVID regulations, wear your mask, social distance, and please wash your hands. All right. So from us here at Mountain Movement on the conversation, we do bid you a good night and see you next week. <laughs> Hi, everybody.